First things first, we have a VOD review, as I said, Kindred vs. Nidley, not Twitch chat. Twitch chat, Twitch, 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 Twitch chat. Do you think a Kindred vs. Nidley is a good game for Silver? Do we think we should be picking Kindred vs. Nidley and Silver? I don't think so. I think this is, I just think you gotta play what you want, you gotta play what you're good at, you gotta play what you have fun with. That's the most important part of the game. I will be different than other coaches in that respect. However, if your goal is to actually climb and your goal is to actually improve, you're making things more difficult. Now let's see what happens with the Teemo. You say you lose it. So we're, my only issue is with this, against the Nidli, Kindred should be fine. Kindred's actually a decent matchup. As long as you can dodge and use your Q into a W, uh, the spear, you should have no problem. But they're both difficult champs to not a close. Kindred has the benefit of Giga scaling. Um, so you, it can make you feel like you know what you're doing just by inevitability. No one knows how to actually close games with Kindred. And so, you know, eventually in Silver, you end up in Exodia land with, with Kindred and you just want order and the, the Soraka dies. So that's great, but it it's, it's, it's creates a bit of illusion about where your power is. Nonetheless, if you love Kindred, play Kindred, man, I'm not, here, I'm not here to stop you. I'll help you as best I can, but it comes with a disclaimer. Now, in terms of lane states, um, let's see here. Shen versus Teemo. Obviously, Shen has uh, his taunt and his damage, which is obscene. Uh, Teemo doesn't have any CC, but does have his um, annoying silence. That's why Darius mains hate him. You've got a, fin you've got a better team comp on the blue side for straight up team fighting. Uh, apart from the Nidalee, I feel like that's a bit, a bit bad. Let's see how she builds. If she builds Lich Bane, we can have Boris memes in the chat, because yeah, please don't do that. Um, this is tough. I mean, Le LeBlanc has really great ganks for the chains. If she can hit her chains, it's a free gank. And of course, Tarek is easy to gank for because of his stun. You gotta get this guy fed. So I like the fact that you're starting top to bottom, but let's see what happens. It's so tragic. Level one, you should be watching this. Um, I would actually, in Silver, I would still just stop the Invade and Ward. They don't have an Invade comp, but the last thing you want is Nidalee just, you know, queuing over, uh, Wing over and stealing it, but, you know, all is perfect sometimes. Yeah, exactly, Boris LS. Okay, not having a tank leash for Kindred is sucky, but it is the way it is. So it looks like you're going to the Krugs, by the way, you're kiting. But you gotta pay attention to the the poison stack. If you click on this in game, um, and this is my biggest tip to those who lose buffs to things like Zyra. Zyra is a bit more visceral, you can see it. But what's what's that champion? Darius. Darius, Twitch, Teemo. You gotta click on this, and on the top left, you're gonna have this beautiful sucker telling you with a timer when that poison tick's gonna finish. So in this case, you should be clicking on this and looking top left. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you make sure you don't auto until it's gone. So like I'm watching, hey, the timer's here and I'm seeing it, right? And you just look at your base AD 70, so you know one auto's gonna do 70, so you can wait till 70 HP and just auto it. But you auto it, and of course you have empowered, so you do more than 70, but me, eh. Watch the timer. <laughs> you know, watch the timer. That's tragic. That's a Vakai IAI in the chat for me. Easily avoidable, easily avoidable, but it does happen. So what I'm going to use, from my perspective, I would have, <laughs> my perspective is from this, how do we recover? Because I'm going to take this from the perspective, excuse me, that maybe there's a singe to stole your red. Maybe they're late invaded and stole your red. Okay, and your level one, how do you recover from this? Okay, the problem is here, you should be giga chugging your potions, all right? Um, if you're a talisman jungler with AoE, you can just do raptors. Um... If you lose your buff, just go take the enemy buff. True. My my question to you then, Mr. Yamas in chat, is that if Nidalee does red, blue, grump for a top lane early gank, which is what I put in my Nidalee video with an 800 LP, 85% win rate challenger player, you know, the Kindred's dead. Level 1 with W and already half HP, that's rough. It's really risky to go for this. Because the bot lane hasn't showed yet, so you know bottom lane started red. So you know full well she started here. But because we don't have any vision control in the river whatsoever, we have literally no idea where Nidalee is. Alright, so I'm gonna watch this. The problem, <laughs> the problem with this, 
Um, you cry in FF? No, you don't need to. You can still win. Yes, I agree it's silver. Which means they're more likely to do buff buff grump now. Look. Oh, she's not even doing it. She's on Raptors. Hey, I agree with you. But my question is, just because it's silver doesn't change good practice. Good practice would say, this is risky. Very risky. In insanely risky. The first thing you need to do is protect your house. Now, the power thing here is, is, is up, I guess, tilt. But the wave needs to be a bit further back. Middle of the wave, push, you know, middle of the lane and push down. Because you see what this minion is? Look at the vision control you have on the red side. So this minion is just beneath halfway in the lane. And the fog of war is here. So in that case, if you're, if you're nidly, I could easily float behind. But the wave is way too pushed up for you to make this move. So you're giving away your location. At this point, um, good players will notice that the teamer took the red. He will notice it. I mean, did they ping it even? No. It's not pinged. I would be pinging Teemo and type, you know, he has red. There's not enough urgency there. Now you're just giving away your location. So, fortunately for you, the Nidley is a bit... This is why we don't play Nidley in silver. Because... <laughs> no. No. Just... No. Look at this. You cannot destroy her game. You know, if, you, if you're a good Nidley, and you're doing, say, red into Krugs, right? And you see this, that should be immediately, I go kill you, okay? So, in this case, you're lucky. So the power thing is bad. Make sure you go behind. Now you can sort of just auto attack, kite as best you can. See, this is where kiting would be difficult because the blue buff is going to be much quicker. So you're going to sustain much more damage now. Yeah, you're going to sustain much more damage in Season 11 from this. Okay, I don't like... My problem here is that you have Smite and you just used your W at the end of the blue buff. So you're not you're not optimizing your clear either. Like, your, your W is just about to come up, which means you're gonna, you can have a Q into a W on the Gromp to speed up taking that. Um, and you should be chugging your potions. At this point, I would assume because of the bad luck, you should be full of, you know, both potions should be gone already. So you can afford to face tank that a little bit, right? Um, you have a bit more HP, and now you can just QW and then you can smite the Gromp. Because you can't use your HP on the Gromp anyway, because it does percentage HP damage, so it negates a lot of your healing. So I, th I think in that case, um, as bad as it was what happened to you, you, you could still get out of this with significantly more HP. There should be no reason why you haven't used the smite yet. At all. Now, this is this is very inefficient because Nidley saw you, right? So even if Nidley is an idiot, she could have just gone down to Krugs and smited it for HP and then invaded. You're toasted. If you can't properly, uh, you can tank the only big Krug while the other one is uh, running behind. Yeah, you can. But I mean, we're not on Krugs. Like, I know you're smiting the wolves, but I'm just sort of outlining some easier ways. The Nidley's gonna steal this. Um, from your perspective, you won't see it, but it's good to use your F keys. You might see that spear. Depends where you're looking. Um, this is gonna have auto push. So, I think for me, what's interesting is what you could have done. Red, blue, gromp, wolves, and then maybe set up for a Ooh. counter gank of the Nidley. Yes. You could have reverse cleared in order to position yourself knowing that the Nidley started bot side. So Nidley starts bot, you know she's gonna go up, which means what we do is we secure our, our red, we get our blue, make sure all buffs are under control, grab wolves, and now we can basically position ourselves to counter gank, because this guy's gonna definitely push as team over Shen. And so when Nidley comes up, you just counter gank. So that's a game plan you can think about. Just if you had secured your red, just out loud. Good. Yeah. RNG is good for you. Um, and now we can look for blue. We see Nidalee crossing the mid lane, so you need to keep that in focus. Uh, and you see her with 16 CS, so you know she did four camps. And we can see this in the replay, um, that she didn't take this crab, because she wants to stop your, your mark. So this is actually very good for you. This is very good for you. Because in 40 seconds, the mark's going to spawn on that. So if she wants to chase you down here in counter gank, if you can get ahead and reset... You can just beeline straight to this crab. Um, the issue is, of course, mid prior, so you'd have to assess that, but... The thoughts of a jungler. <laughs> the thoughts of a jungler. 
Okay, so she's gonna take this. We Q, W. Oh, your W's down. That sucks. Yeah, okay. There's not much you can do in that case. And you should have seen the Nidley. So now you're in a bit of a bind. I hate this though. Like, th they should be ready. The Tarek. Why is the Tarek in this position? He should have Toba Bush control now, right? Looking to sort of bait them into something. He can just take free damage and try and bait them into something. Because if they commit and you flank through here and they don't have any vision control, that's a free gank. So that's 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 on the Tarek a little bit, but I like I like the attempt, right? Problem is you lead with your E as well. Um that's not really gonna do anything. You know, we just E into a Q, we don't have W for additional Qs. There's no way you have enough damage, and I don't think you're ever gonna get the execute proc on your E because it's it's Yumi, you know, and it's mess missing HP, so. Um yeah. Not you need to leave now. Because we see this. You should just you should just kite out. Cause they they, they see you. Ah, uh, I don't think it yeah. Okay, so the, your head's in the right space, but what you should be doing is just leaving this way. Just leave this way. Because we see the Nidalee. And it's as I said, right? Even it's- you can do this, it's very easy. It's very easy. You know, you, you see 16 CS. Um, I would think she did the crab. However, you have to play it in your mind that maybe she didn't. So, let's just get out here, reset. Right, we've got our Krugs and Raptors and this crab to take. If Nidalee shows on the bot side while you do that, you can counter jungle. And of course, you can always look to dive this, especially with this fat wave building up. So th those are the things I would start to look for. I know that's advanced. Um, people say don't, you know, say that it's silver, but those little things are advanced for a reason because they're good. Yeah, yeah. you have to disengage now. This is a lot of time wasted. Did... Timo died. Of course he did. Right. Reset. Okay, I went into the Raptor camp, so... Obviously, oh, obviously. You got you got a stack. Never mind. I'm dumb. You got a stack. The 50-50. Okay. You need to wait for LeBlanc to hit her chains. You should never use flash with- yeah, yeah. The flash is a separate thing. The flash here, instead of just W queuing, um, because Q wasn't up, Q wasn't up, but W was, which would refresh the Q timer. So you could have easily just W queued over the wall, but the base Q wasn't up. Um, because she queued here without using, without using a W. So that was just full eight seconds. Um, but my the point stands, you just kite out this way. Now here you need to wait for the chains. If she hits, if LeBlanc hits chains, then you can go in. But you don't want to go in too soon without. Nidalee shows up as well. It's good pressure by the Nidalee. Not enough on you, but it's good on the mid lane. I think here... I think here out of base... What we need to think about is... Um, your experience is really low. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> Look at that spear. Very close. I think here you should be thinking about um, just Krugs, Raptors, and then look to, to do this. Because you're so behind on experience after losing that red. Um, you could alternatively look to uh, Raptors, Krugs into a top lane gank. But I'm not sure at this point of our damage profile versus Shen, who is flash up. We don't have Ignite. We don't have Flash and Teemo. He will just W, so you need to make sure you stay outside that W. But I think you need to focus on experience at this point. Because what's going to win in silver is not carnivore-style jungling, right? It's 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 omnivore-style jungling. Um, and by showing here, we sort of give the Nidalee prio on counter-jungling and deep vision. Like, you're still level 3, going for, like, your third gank here. You know? Okay. Okay, the Zed, the Zed doesn't want to fight the game. Alright, now up, 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 up. She has a jump too. Okay, I'm watching. <laughs> okay. Dodge a spear. There you go. 
Don't get auto. Keep auto spacing. Auto spacing. Auto spacing. Dodge it. Dodge it. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a little fiesta, but good job. Good job. All right. Fine. Nice, nice way to pick up a kill. That gives you huge experience gains. Now, I know, I know a lot of low elo junglers in this point. You think, okay, good job. Now my red spawning in you know a minute. Um, so I'm gonna go get that. The problem with that is it's not optimizing your camp sequencing and it's not opt optimizing your experience. This is a level one camp. This is dead. So by going topside now, you have the choice of getting this level one camp. Maybe getting your red. Okay. Now what? What do you do next? Gank mid again, level 5. This guy's going to be 6. This guy's 100% going to be 6. So if you gank here, you're dead. Um, the lane that's volatile for me is the bottom lane. Because whoever gets really far ahead in this will be able to easily win. Exactly. Bot lane. Because, not only because bot lane's out of gank, you have a level 4 camp gromp. You have a level 4 camp, sorry, 5 wolves, because you took it so late. 5. Um, lucky there, you know? And you're close relatively to 6. So by sort of taking these, okay, straight down, wolves, obviously you don't know about this ward, but if you have good pathing practice, sticking to the wall here, Nidalee won't see you. So you can just do wolves into Grump, and then you can say, right, let's just really go for this bottom lane gang. Um, which will get you kills, give you 6, give you prior on the dragon, and get your Twitch fed. Your red will still be up, but by the time you've done this, okay, if Nidley does something stupid like stay out like she is with no mana resources, she can't help her bottom lane. And at this point, she's really low on resources. Like, she's doing this, right? So in my mind, you're on Wolves, you're on Wolves, you're on Gromp, you know, you're on Gromp. Now we're going bottom lane, we're going bottom lane, and so you could try something here, obviously, and she's not in the picture. Now, if nothing happens, it's fine. If nothing happens, it's okay. Uh, if you're Warwick, yes, you can go straight to Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, this is literally... I'm, I'm doing a video for tomorrow. Um, I'm doing a video for tomorrow where this basically ties up nicely. So in this case, you would do this and this. And if your gank is available bot lane, in this case, I'm playing very safe. So it doesn't look like it is. Um, you can just go straight to this. You pull it out and you do it. Now with Kindred, it's a bit more risky, but you'd, you'd have to pay attention to lanes. But even now, imagine if you're just rotating down and they they engage here. Or maybe you lane gank, you know, you gotta think about how you want to approach that lane. But 100% bugged. 100% the uh, right play here is getting this experience. Because it's so big into, into the... The RNG crab is, you know, nice. You didn't know you were gonna get it. But I think that's a better play. Because straight up... Look at the damage they did without you. Like, this is without you, and the fact that Nidalee's gonna be on the side. Like, you know straight up that Nidalee's gonna be this side with Krugs, okay? Um, Graf Rutz von Anstalt, thank you very much for that spicy prime. Odin, thanks to you. Zelda, lol, thank you for following. Demons34 and Invisible Blackia, yeah. thank you very much for following. As well as I, Panda Bear. And living at the top. Sorry, I missed those. Um, so this is, I like this move anyway. It's good counter jungle, right? For context, the way I explain the coaching is what should you have done instead of what you did do to put yourself in the best position to carry? We look at those options and what you should do. Then we go back to what you did do and we look at what you should do um, from the options from that, right? So think of it like the perfect game is a straight line. Like if you adhere to the straight line, the straight road, you have the perfect game. And then you see a challenger player every now and then sort of deviating from the straight line. But overall, their game, their decisions, is are very close to the, to the perfect game, right? Um, but in silver, on this side of the wall, right, every time you make a wrong decision, you have to make another decision. The good decision gets you back to the perfect game. The bad decision takes you further away from it. So in silver, more often than not, you're taking the bad decision, and you just start getting away from the perfect game, and everything compounds. So the way I like to do things is to sort of adhere to how can you get back to the perfect game, the best way to play. Um, and then what decision did you make and how we can fix it? I'll draw a diagram at some point. I know that doesn't make sense without a diagram. I'm visual as well. Um, but it's sort of something I thought about, like, how, how do I define how I coach? And I thought that was a nice, a nice example, but I need, I need to draw it out. So for me, um, this is good. You're going to get a whole blue side. Uh, you should be able to get the red here, the blue here as well. 
Um, you don't see her, but I think at this point, you should have had a control wood. If you had the gold, you could leave it and see. I would try and take this. I think not taking it's a little... See, as soon as you see this, you should take it. I assume you do. Okay. Yeah. My problem is, though, is that you've gone into a pseudo-vertical jungling meta, and killing Shen isn't going to do anything. Hey, Spretzels. You know, killing Shen's not going to do anything, because the guy is Shen. At some point, at 35 minutes, you're going to catch Vayne out, you're not going to have enough damage to kill her, Yumi's going to heal her, Shen's going to alt her, and then she's going to tumble around everywhere and everyone's dead. You know, so... The volatile lane is 100% bottom lane, so reason 1, experience, elevated camps, reason 2, bottom lane, volatile, reason 3, get that dragon for consistent uh, soul prior, and then of course reason 4, by the time you've done all that and you go back to top side, all those camps have respawned at a higher level, and you, once again you're matching Nidalee now, and we can basically kill her whenever we want. Who have you marked by the way at this point? Is the mark still on? It's the mark still on Nidley, right? Who who's who's being giga marked here? No one. Is no one marked? Is Yumi still marked? I don't see the mark on anyone. Is that a visual glitch, or did you actually not? Or did you actually not mark anyone? That would be something to think about. If you haven't marked anyone, make sure you're updating that. <laughs> Crucial. Okay, he's level six. Okay, good dodge on the Nidalee Q again. Alright, that's better. Okay, we're getting into a rhythm here. Not bad. And you stole all her blue side. So think about this, right? You stole all her blue side. She got your crab on the bottom side. She didn't really do anything else. She's going to go up, then there's nothing to do. And because you cross mid lane, she knows you have the blue buff. So she's immediately going to turn around and start whining that she lost her whole blue side. So yes, it was good counter jungling, but a better jungler would have abused your position. Was Shen Mark? Did I just miss it? Uh, let me let, let me have a look. I might have just missed it. My bad. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just missed it. My bad. Yep. But I mean, you marked him without any intent of going there. Well, I, you can use the mark for misdirection, but I think at this point, once you go down, it's very clear you're not going to be using it on Shen. You know, and at this point, if you're looking to really match the Nidalee and destroy her the way you are, then I, I think 100% you should um, just keep it on her or bottom lane for now. Or mid, because you're not really ganking top lane. Okay, I want to watch this. Um, They could see this. They could see this. I mean, you have to acknowledge it's a little bit risky. Because you know she's not going to be topside. I, I see the ping here, but there's nothing up there. There's nothing up there, so... I feel like it's it's a little unlikely she goes up knowing that you've taken a whole jungle. I'll chalk this down to a little bit of unlucky. Ah. Uh-huh. This is the problem. This is the problem, boss. Um... Yeah, I don't think I want to use my ult to out. I don't think I want to use my ult on a tier one dragon when this guy has a global, this guy has an ult, and you got a Yumi and a Vein. I feel like it's better to. I mean, it's it's good instincts by the Nidalee to face checker, but you have to acknowledge, you know, hold on. We started this dragon while this dude was back in base, so you have to acknowledge that. By doing this without your team around you, without Pryo, if they can test you, uh, you're inherently going to have a rough time. Invictus is dead. Thank you for the prime boot. Welcome to the stream. Odin says thank you. Um, yeah, so I like the idea for a Sneaky Drake, but please pay attention to your ADC and your bot lane. Um, understand that they've already gone back to base. You know, you've got 30 seconds between them going back and sort of showing up here to contest and Shenna's ultimate. So pros and cons... You know, high risk jungling, but just don't use your, your ult to try and smite this away. Um, you haven't used your E on this. You could use your E so that it procs and you can combo that with your smite. It's obviously capped, but at least it's something to try and out smite her. I mean, it's 300, so it's minimal. I mean, it's, sorry, maximum. You, you know exactly sort of 
how much damage is going to go through. Yeah, it's okay, Detecto. Don't worry. I don't mean this to be as... Ne it might sound a bit more negative. I don't actually mean it. I mean, the Nidalee just... Did she just Giga Smite? <laughs> she just Giga Smited. So what's funny is that she early smited anyway. So if you have good reactions, you can just smite that as it is. I mean, she smited before the ult came down. Um, this was like, what, 1000 HP and she had 5 510, so... Obviously, it's going to heal it as well. The, the whole logic behind using the ult there is so risky because it heals back up. And it's such an, a minimal amount of um, damage that your smite does at this point. And now, they just they all come in. I feel like this is a big moment. At least you got the dragon, though. So, your blue side jungling, your counter jungling, was excellent. I, I liked it. I mean, it wasn't necessarily the right decision. But it was good to go to this quadrant. And as soon as she shows, you take the blue. Great. But because you ran across mid lane, it gave away again what you were doing, what you did, where you are, where you're going. And so the Nidalee, even in this elo, can say, oh, hold up, maybe Kindred going to Dragon. Um, instead of you just saying, right, cross mid, nice gank, let me take my blue side, okay? So basically you, you deny. You took all of this, you take all of this, Twitch gets back to lane, now you're level 7. Let me gank again, bottom side, with my bot lane showing up, as Vayne and Yumi get back to lane. Nidalee at this point has nothing up on his board, so she doesn't know what to do. So once you've done that, now you can flip to the dragon, uncontested, nice and free. You get to reset, go back to your red side, rinse these camps again, or potentially go straight to the Herald. But because you're almost level 8, and the Nidalee is a house cat, you 1v1 her easily. You get this Herald, you can now use it. Um, I would... You know, having it on the mid lane would be nice, but there's 5 plates. Teemo could look interesting, but... I feel like right there, that moment, that early to mid game transition macro in silver is so big because it prevents your teammates from throwing because they don't realize how big their lead is. And because silver players tend to play like they always have a lead, um, that's good, right? <laughs> that's good. Okay, uh, he's just gonna swap back. So f for me, um, for me, that, that mishap here at the dragon is huge. The red buff sucks, but I still feel like we could have easily recovered. Hopefully that made sense. But for me, this 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 is a bit of an issue now. Like you forced a lot of ganks. Um, but the ganks weren't in flow with the lanes, they weren't in flow with your farming, and so you're really far behind in CS. You haven't taken Krugs yet. I know they're far out of the way. It's okay to leave them up for a certain period of time, but um, you are a scaling jungler, you know? Aha! Hey, at least you're dodging the Nidalee Qs. Hey, get that counter minion. You hear that? You guys hear that? You hear it? It's the world's tiniest violin. Playing a very sad song. For that cannon minion. It's a minion. Playing a violin. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 good. It's good. I'm I'm just I'm just teasing you, but the, the intention was great. I like that you at least pit you at least noticed, hey, there's a cannon minion, let me take it. So that, that's good. A lot of times I watch uh, the, these VODs and they don't even notice, so I, I applaud you. Right. 18th time's the charm for the bottom lane. We've got... Vayne. Uh, do you have a stun up, mister? 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 Okay. Great. Okay, we got the stun on the Yumi. Promise he's tanking the tower. What? Why are we ulting, my son? Tarek! Tarek! <laughs> we can dive this! <laughs> Why aren't we ulting? <laughs> I'm gonna collapse. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna giga collapse. No, no. You did fine, Detecto. You got condemned. The Tarek should have gone in and triggered R immediately. And because he stunned the Yumi, she's dead. She can't reattach now. What's the CDR on that? You know, she can't reattach. Um, wait, I'm looking at, I'm looking at him. She, she can't reattach because she got stunned, so. Hey, Tarek, my, my, my boy. Your gems are not outrageous. They're ordinary. And maybe a little fake. Are you taking raptors? See, the point is to give them such a lead that they don't want to take your raptors. But the, again, the secondary point is, 
by playing this dragon fight correctly, you get to turbo go down here and take this herald, which is objective. Play it to the side to the objective. Currently, there's no objective on bottom side and there's no camps because Nidalee counter jungled you. There's only ganks. So you're not getting any other fed. If you don't have successful ganks, if you don't have successful ganks, like you have multiple fell ganks on the bottom side, um, you're not getting any experience. Right? Beer and uh, beer and uh, worlds and discord sounds good to me. Castle Lager, anybody? All right. Still no. I see now. I see. If you see the Nidley here, I'm interested to see what you do. Let me look. Ah. Okay. Please go to the Herald immediately. No hesitation. Good job. Good job. Excellent. Twice now you've done that. It's good. Now, because it's early enough, you should be able to use it and get Grump. Take Grump. Okay, you got, You should be using it here. You should be using it here over the wall. Immediately over the wall. You've got 41 seconds, two plates. It's absolute perfection. The dude's TPing in from what I can see. So, woo. Nice. But again, wasted. So, great initial decision again. Right, you see that, Detecto? You see that? I mean, the nice thing for me, Detecto, is that despite all the, the, the mishaps that have happened, you're putting yourself in the position to make the right decision, which is great. You know, that's, absolute, that's great. It's great to put yourself in the right decision. If you were consistently making the wrong ones and you were always in the wrong place, it'd be a bigger problem. Good plan, take this. But now we've missed it. I don't know if you're going to use it, but, you know, this is two plates for you. That will offset a lot of your, your issues. Uh, like, Nidalee's still there, you know? Like, we should, we should be... There was such a big wave here. You could have easily heralded this. Taken the tower with one charge. Just killed the freaking Chen, because he's down two levels to the Teemo. Now you've got a second charge here. That would force the Zed to rotate. Um, and if you see this, of course, disengage. But at minimum, I don't think he's going to leave. Because he doesn't look like a roaming Zed. And if Nidalee's going to stay on the bottom side here, you've got a double push. You know, such a nice double push, which is great because they're going to respond to it. You get to reset and then go straight to the dragon. Yeah? Objectives. Objectives. And because, and because your marks are... Um, and because your marks are sort of not being used properly, is it still in the Shen? Nah, it isn't. Good, 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 good. Um, but because of that cadence, we're not in the right position to get this. Now, it is possible what I just said plays out a little too slowly. Um, so maybe, in hindsight, from my perspective, what I just said, you take this tower, you kill the Shen, we can reset and go straight to the dragon. Huh? Um, don't overstay the push, because obviously we want to get this, it's a fire dragon. And we don't want to give it away freely. And now, the, the thing is, because you didn't use it, okay... I love Vayne Condemn. Vayne Condemn's a great spell. Um, because you didn't use it, um, we're in a bit of a rough spot. And you didn't have any itemization resets either. You're sitting at 1100, so... You know, 14 minutes, level 8, it's a bit behind. Right. And now, because of all those mishaps, uh, we didn't capitalize. You know, they've got the first tower. We've got this one. But they really capitalize on the game state being elevated because they got Shen ult, so... <laughs> I like it, just... There you go. Tarek! I like the alpha. I like the alpha, the alpha move, but um, again, team composition is important, um, and all those mistakes earlier put you in a position where you cannot win this. Big sad, big sad. Like you're 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 behind a lot. You're behind a lot. Um, this is actually meant that we've got a lot more in-depth here than I intended to detect it, but let me see. Um, is coin flip at some points? Points, I certainly can work to improve. Okay, so, 
this is a long game, as you said, and it sort of gets coin flippy, which is which you know we we don't really care about. Um, but the point to me, I hope you can see that everything up until this point is 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 not coin flip, is not coin flip, at all, at all. Because the thing is, you're you're going into these fights um, at a disadvantage when we could have a huge advantage. The like the Yumi Vein is just disgusting. Yeah, like, you should never be two levels down um, on a vein, you know, on an ADC. You're, you're a level down at a Yumi, on a support. And watch the Twitch here. You know, the Twitch is on world stage. Look at him. Look at him go, baby. Um, don't, not in the W, Twitch. Not in the W. Shen. I mean, he's not even that fed, but he's able to at least do stuff, you see? Uh, secondly, secondly, I think you should be looking, I don't know, do we, th I think maybe we gotta go for it, huh? We gotta go for it, we gotta go for the, uh, the, the Grievous Wounds. Bork, you know, I don't think Shen's healing's an issue whatsoever, but Nidalee has heals. If she goes Athenes, you know, and you got a Yumi, and you got a, you know, an early, uh, Executioners could be nice. You slap it into your build here. Um, I don't think there's a need to go into, uh... To a cleaver, but that kindred itemization is a separate discussion. We can talk about it in Discord. Uh, we have our resident kindred one trick. If you wish to ping Haywood, um, he will help you out with itemization. Um, should probably announce all that stuff, but yeah, it's not coin flip. It was it was all in your control. If you have detector, if you have a specific question Gosh. about the end game, um, just let me know in the coaching Discord. Okay, like give me a timestamp and I'll, I'll get back to you. Because I, I know uh, we went a bit long in the early game, but I there's so many things to unpack. So just let me know if there's something specific about the end game, okay?